Hiya, this is uh, the Bergen cover and on the Bergen cover today we have a British World War II number 69 Mark I hand grenade. Um, yep, that is a grenade. It's a plastic or bakelite body grenade. Um, made in such a way purposely as to be an offensive grenade. So basically the grenade could be used the uh, in the offence the grenade could be thrown uh, without the thrower having to take a great deal of cover. Now, it didn't always work out um, because some of the components in the fuse mechanism were metal and uh, it became a bit of a problem later as was found in the field. Um, the grenade is fitted with a number 247 always fuse. That's the uh, screw piece at the top. And... Um, this was also used on the British Gammon grenade and also on a phosphorus grenade. Um, right, the grenade functions um, by usually the big piece of tape, which uh, on the HE version anyway, which went from here to here, so that wouldn't just easily unscrew. But I've uh, loosened it off so I can pretty much do this video one handed. So to use the grenade, you would remove and discard the plastic cover. And then that would show you this piece of tape with a little lead weight on the end. There's a quite heavy piece of lead weight. So you'd throw the grenade in such a way that as the grenade travelled through the air, the little piece of tape would unravel with the weight of the lead at the end and that would pull the pin from the grenade. The way the 247 fuse functioned, it would hit the ground and be in an always fuse, i.e with that name, it would function in all ways the grenade hit the ground. Um, this cut top cover would usually be screwed down flush with that plate, but I've uh, unscrewed it slightly so I can do this one-handed. So as, as I said, this sort of is a two-in-one grenade because I've got this grenade today in practice configuration. So I, there's no fuse parts inside the top of the grenade. There's just a weighted Bakelite insert, which would weigh approximately the same as the uh, the fuse components, which would be in the grenade in the live HE version. Um, be in practice configuration as well. Um, inside, there's a plastic weighted piece to weight it so it would be the same sort of weight as a high explosive version. Um, it wouldn't normally come apart in the middle, uh, and it comes apart in the middle um, really for manufacturer. When the grenade was filled originally with the explosive, it would have been filled through the side screw. Screw on the bottom is for inserting a detonator into the grenade. Um, the fuse would not fire to explode the grenade, it would just set up a set off a small charge, which would send the flash down the central hole to initiate the uh, the explosive content. Uh, just do that up quickly. Right, markings on the bottom: number sixty nine, Mark One, DLR forty one. So this is a forty one produced number sixty nine grenade, and DLR is Delarue Company, uh, in London, who manufactured the grenade. Um, so I haven't screwed it quite back together, but we'll now put the grenade back together, but in a high explosive configuration. So we'll discard the, uh, the piece for practice and we'll bring in these little pieces here. So this is the top cover of the always fuse. It's a concave recess and a, um, a little tiny lead ball. Some were ball bearing, some were steel. Uh, there's a firing pin with a little tiny creep spring and a, a recess in the bottom to match the ball. And then there's the actual uh, holder. That little tiny hole in the bottom there would have contained a firing cap. So when the pin went down, it would have struck it, caused a flash down into that central hole 
to explode the grenade. So I'm going to try and reinsert all this back together, one-handed. So a little tiny creep spring and the deck holder would go together like this. And as you can see, the little tiny creep spring would keep the firing pin away from the, uh, the firing cap, which would be at the bottom of that hole. That then would sit inside the top of the fuse body. And there's the little tiny round recess, which the ball bearing sits in top of. Or the musket ball, or whatever you want to call it. It looks like a musket ball. So that sits there, it's got a little bit of weight on there. And then this concave cover screws down over the top. So this is now in high explosive configuration. As you know, I haven't put the pin in. So the pin would go through the hole, through the hole in the shaft of the firing pin, and that would keep the firing pin away from the priming cap at the bottom of the hole. So it would go through there. No, it won't go through, but it would go in there, then much the same way, you throw the grenade, that would throw off. Um, we've now got a ball bearing sitting in a concave Baker-like top and a concave Baker-like base. So whichever way the grenade landed, it would fire because that round ball would be sitting in a concave top and a concave bottom. Whichever way it landed, the action of the ball would push this way and then this way, driving the firing pin into the cap, which would explode the grenade. Um, that's about it, really. Um, it's the 247 fuse on the 69 grenade. These are the uh, quite heavy pieces of Bakelite used in the practice version just to weight the grenade down. But as I said, the 247 fuse here is now in HE configuration with the uh, the ball, the pin, and the creep spring and debt holder all in place. Right, I hope uh, you've learned something from this little uh, video. I don't think there's another video on YouTube explaining the practice version and the HE version and um, any questions drop a message below. Bye for now.